You are not asked to make or do what lies beyond your understanding. All you are asked to do is let it in, only to stop your interference with what will happen of itself. And I think that's what we have to remember. What will happen of itself? The truth will happen of itself. Because the lie is something we have to maintain. The illusion is something we have to maintain. The truth, we just have to get out of its way. The truth, we have to get out of our, stop our judgments. And that's what this is talking about. So let's go back to the lesson. We're on the fourth line now. It says, today I recognize so that I can only see, let's get the perspective here. We only understand things from bits of our perception and we want to see from the wholeness. So on the fourth line, it says, today I recognize that this is so. I want to see from the wholeness, not from bits and pieces. And so I am relieved of judgments that I cannot make. I cannot make. I cannot make judgments because I have no basis for them. They're just on little bits and pieces. Thus do I free myself and what I look upon to be in peace as God created us. So it's saying that when I lift my perception off my judgments, the peace comes rushing in. That's what this says here. We just let this truth in. That is the truth of what we are. So let's go to the next, the third passage on that line that says this. This is in the manual for teachers. To ask the Holy Spirit to decide for you is simply to accept your true inheritance. So when we're saying here, I want to step back, I want to withdraw my judgments, we're really saying, you decide for me. You know, I'm ready to know your will for me. So it says, the Holy Spirit is there to help you accept your true inheritance. That's all he's there to do. Help you. At, what a thing. If you said you're going to get an inheritance, that's all he's there to help you do is to realize what you're entitled to. What's this book about? I'm entitled to miracles. I'm entitled to the love that, that abounds within me. I am entitled to the knowledge that that gives me. So it says, does this mean that you cannot say anything without consulting him? Isn't that amazing? It says, no, indeed, exclamation mark. Because I think people say this, I had a miracle, but I didn't ask the Holy Spirit for it. I don't know where that came from. Well, here's the answer to it. That would hardly be practical. And it is the practical with which this course is most concerned. If you have made it a habit to ask for help when and where you can, you can be confident that wisdom will be given you when you need it. So it says, prepare. Here's what we do. Here's the recipe. This is the practice we need to make. Prepare for this each morning. Do your lesson. Hold these thoughts in mind. Remember God when you can throughout the day. Ask the Holy Spirit's help when it is feasible to do so. And thank him for his guidance at night. And your confidence will be well-founded indeed. What a great thing. All it's saying is, when you awaken, remember who walks with you. Throughout the day, when things get tough, remember you are not alone. And keep adding the solution to the seeming problem. And then at night, give thanks that he has never left your side. And then look at that paragraph, just the first line in that paragraph that follows it. Never forget that the Holy Spirit does not depend on your words. He understands the requests of your heart and answers them. So even when you do not know, I don't even know what my problem is. I'm so confused. I don't even know what to ask for. Have you ever thought that? I don't, I don't even know what I'm feeling enough to ask for. He knows. Why? Because he doesn't need your words. He does not need all your talking to him. He doesn't understand your words. He understands the requests of your heart. And it's so important for us to recognize. So don't think I'm fooling him by saying this, or I don't know, so he can't get through. Of course he can get through. If you're just confused and you can't hear, it's because we're not willing to. We're not willing to get out of our way. It's not that he's not doing his job. We're just not willing to listen. So let's look at that last section in this lesson that says, Father, today I leave creation free to be itself. I honor all its parts in which I am included. So it's saying, I'm not going to be judging everybody and everything, myself and everybody else. I'm going to honor. Now, when I say honor all its parts in which I am included, I'm going to honor myself. I'm going to honor others. It does not mean you agree with what they're doing. It does not mean that you agree with their egos. Their egos may, quite frankly, do things that are inappropriate for them and inappropriate for you. It has nothing to do with agreeing with their egos. It's honoring the truth about them. 
And if, if you're trying to say, yeah, but they're doing this, I'm, that has nothing to do with the truth about them. If they're doing something in the world, that has nothing to do with the truth about them. Okay, if they're saying something in this world, it has nothing to do with the truth about them. The truth about them is they are holy children of God, period, and that's what you honor. You honor nothing they do in this world. It's not about honoring this world. It's about honoring the truth. 